Today I want to do one of our most requested videos. This is a video where when I ask people, hey, what should we do on the show, this is always thrown out as an idea. So today, I want to go through some of our best finds ever, some of my best finds ever, while filming the NES Pursuit. Let's get into it. Here we go! So this first find comes to us from episode 13 titled Goodwill Myth Debunked. And now the reason we titled the video this is for this time period during game hunting is when a lot of people were doing videos saying Goodwill has kind of lost its way in the game hunting world. You're not really going to find anything there. And we were filming at Goodwill and we got asked to turn off the camera. You can actually hear it in the video. The lady tells us turn off the camera. Excuse me. So we do, but a second later you see me walk out with this big smile on my face. I am happy, I am excited. And the reason that is, is because when the camera was off and I was going to check out, I look behind the counter. Someone just brought a box over of, you know, Genesis games, check them out. And there is a giant box filled with complete Sega Genesis games. And they wanted a certain price for the whole box, but I was able to get the games for $2 each. Holy crap, we'll show you guys later. I picked up about 15 games, Ricky picked up a system, quite a few games, Nintendo booklets. The games in this bundle are as follows, and remember, they are all 100% complete. Mick and Mac Global Gladiators, Kid Chameleon, General Chaos, Mutant League Football, Altered Beast, Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage 2, and Moonwalker. I paid $16 for all of those games, and according to video game price charting, that lot is worth $324. We were ecstatic on that find because it was at Goodwill. Everyone was saying it can't happen anymore, and it happened to us. So you gotta keep looking everywhere and anywhere. Don't give up on any specific place. It can always happen. Here we go! This next one comes to us from episode 47, and this is one of those dream come trues. This is one of those things that normally doesn't pay off, but it did for us. It's one of those days when you're looking through CDs, and if you've ever roamed through CDs before, not looking for CDs, but looking for CD-based video games, this can be a grueling process. This is a very time-taking process. This is not very exciting. If you're not looking for CDs, to look for these random things. But Ricky and I start to see some turbo CD games. So what happens to Ricky and I next is darn near unbelievable. Now, if you guys watch our show, you know we barely come across TurboGrafx-16 stuff. We happen to run across them at a place that's selling CDs for an insanely cheap price. We barely could hold ourselves together here. So I just got one three. Please? Yeah. And this is when it gets exciting. We're like, okay, there's not just one here. There's multiple here. And the best and the kicker is we asked the lady, how much are these CDs? And she says, It's okay. How much are the CDs? How much? Two dollars each or three for five? Well, that's a good seat. Two dollars each or three for five dollars. Holy cow! That episode also proves very much that I am very close with Ricky and a very much a loving friend because I was handing off Ricky these games that were very expensive games, very pricey games when I'd find them because I would find them first on a lot of them and just pass them over. Yeah. I'm just handing my stuff to Ricky at this point. That's why I love Andrew. In a, you know, friendly way. Wait, just a friend way. <laughs> a friendly friend way. The Turbo Graphic CD. This doesn't ever happen, but it's happening today. Oh, and reminder, this episode, by the way, is my finds on the show. This is my finds that I specifically found. This doesn't count for some of Ricky's stuff. But as I said, I'm classifying this one as my finds because I did find them. I just passed them on to Ricky to be a good friend. Oh man, it was kind of hard to watch me handing over stuff like that that simply back then. Ricky, the love is real. This is like our eighth one. This day is amazing. It doesn't even make sense. 
But all the games that Ricky ended up picking up in this bundle were Valis 3, Yeast, Comic Fantasy 2, Final Zone 2, Dungeon Explorer, and Time Ball, equaling $383 where we paid 10 bucks. That was a rad find. That's where I was like, okay, the door is wide open on all different kinds of turbo stuff out here. But I have to admit, we've never really found that big of a score in the turbo world again in the wild. But that was a good one. Here we go! This next one here was a huge game changer for me and for us because this happened in episode 11. This was early on in the NES Pursuit life cycle. It's one of those things that kind of made you realize as a game hunter, like, okay, these things are going to start happening. We're gonna start finding things. And we're at OCC SWAT meet, and I see this trash bag on the floor. Sweet, man. My hand's literally shaking right now. And this is one of those points that started to prove to me in my head, like, okay, you gotta really dig. You gotta look everywhere. You gotta look through everything. But in this trash bag, I walk up to the trash bag and I'm like, okay, there, maybe there will be something in here. You never know, I'm being silly. But I peek it open and it's filled with Super Nintendo games. Turtles in time. Oh, man, nice. Street Fighter Alpha 2. And I see some good games in there. Street Fighter Alpha 2, I see Turtles in Time. And right away I'm like, okay, before I get too excited, I gotta remain my composure. This is where I started to learn game hunting techniques, where when you see something, don't go, oh wow, oh my gosh, or open your eyes big and be excited. You gotta kinda, not underplay it, but yeah, yeah, actually you gotta underplay it. I look at it, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stay calm. How much for these games? Awesome, I'm gonna try to not draw attention. He starts throwing out some really cheap prices. How much are the games? Uh, each. Can I get a deal if I take a bunch? Okay. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18 20, 27. Can I get all these for 20? Cool, thank you. Ricky, go ahead and show them the games I got. Alrighty then. I'll be a pain over here. And for me, this was really important because this is the first time, yes, I've been finding games before previously that are worth money and good amounts of money, but in this episode, at the time, Turtles in Time was very talked about in the retro community, very like, if you find that, you're lucky in the wild, if you find it, you're lucky in the wild, so it was one of those ones to me where it kind of proved like, haha. Not only did I find you know, a game that's worth something, but a game that is kind of the talked about game, the game that everybody was kind of desiring at that point in time in game hunting. So I was very thrilled. Oh man, you guys, Turtles in Time. I was freaking out when I got this because I've been looking for this for a long time and when we got it and the guy told us I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I was so worried that the guy would know what he had. Oh, and also, by the way, the total of those games was was worth $141 and I paid $20. Again, not the biggest turnover as far as price, which yes, it still is good, but for me it was about digging, learning about digging on the show, learning about tactics while game hunting, and that I could find some of the big stuff other people are talking about. Here we go! Okay, I'm gonna do one more for now. I have a ton more of these. I actually wrote down like 15 different things and I was watching some of the older episodes like, holy cow, we have so much stuff. But I wanted to give you guys one more and then let me know if you guys actually want me to do this type of video again so I don't overdo it or make it too long when you guys don't really care. This next one is a really gnarly one coming from episode 18 of the NES Pursuit. Uh, this one will teach you a lesson, it taught us a lesson, to look everywhere, even places that don't look like it's gonna have video games at all, even if it's something that's completely out of left field when it comes to game hunting. But we were at the swap meet walking around, uh, Ricky and myself and Chris Hurley, our old cameraman, uh, who says hi by the way. They walked right by this one booth and I don't blame them, it was one of those booths that have like you know, cell phone chargers, ethernet cables, routers, books, like random things that you would never poke in at and be like, this guy's always set up here. He's like a booth, he's like a seller who's always here. He always has the same stuff that has nothing to do with gaming. But I'm walking by and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna poke my head a little bit, kinda maybe, you know, who knows, whatever. And I look and I see. Okay, so for three bucks, I just got a Core Graphics too for three bucks, which is basically like a update, from my understanding, I don't know too much about turbo graphics and all this, but an updated version, like a part two, which is just smaller and a different color. Could it be a PC Engine Core Graphics 2 sitting on the edge of the table? And I'm like, there's no way this guy 
has this here. Does he know what this is? And yes, there was a little bit of, you know, balance in my head like, well, I don't want to tell him, but I don't want to lie. But it was just one of those days where it was so early on. I'm just so excited, so excited. I'm just going to go with whatever happens. So I tell the guy, I hold it up. Hey, how much, how much for this? And he goes, for the router? And I just look and I'm like, how much for this? And he goes, two bucks. Because the person I think thought it was like a car battery accessory, so I am like super, super excited about this. I never see these ever. How wonderful! Ever out in the wild. So this is amazing. I'm like so happy right now. It was just sitting on the end of the table, and Ricky walked right by it, and so did Chris. That's why we didn't get it on footage. I think Chris got it right after I bought it. But I lifted it up to the guy, and my hand started shaking because I'm like, oh my gosh, I never find really that much unusual things or uncommon. So I lifted it up and I said, how much for this? Two bucks for a PC Engine Core Graphics 2. Basically a Turbo Graphics for those of you that don't know. That is a steal. Uh, that is beyond a steal right now. And even back then, those were selling. Right now, if you look on eBay, sold prices between $150 to $200. It was a lesson learned for all of us because you gotta look everywhere, not even like I was saying, just in trash bags and stuff, but even in places where you're like, I'm here all the time. This person never has gaming stuff. You never know what people are gonna get their hands on because it's a swap meet. They see things, they grab things, they don't know what things are. Uh, you gotta look. And with that PC Engine Core Graphics 2, by the way, even though it was an awesome deal, even though it was a steal of a deal, I ended up, in another episode, which I can't remember, I ended up giving it to one of our first 10 subscribers ever. And we did this way later in the show when we had, I don't know, like I think on that show, at that time we had like 32,000 subscribers. And we ended up giving it, giving it to one of our first subscribers, a guy who has been around since the beginning. His name's Jose Robles. He's a nice guy. Uh, we still see him at conventions from here time, from time to time. So yeah, that was big. Here we go! So I have more of these, but I want to know if you guys want to see more of these. Uh, I really like doing them. I love looking at footage for them because, guys, I have so many more where even back then, I didn't know what these things were worth and they weren't worth as much. But now I look back and I'm like, holy cow, it's a... $150 game and I got it for five bucks. So let me know if you guys want more of these. I loved them, I loved doing this. I had so much fun uh, watching the footage and going down memory lane with myself and with Ricky. Oh, and also we'll do one of Ricky's too as well. Uh, he wants to do one of his best finds. When I was telling him about it, he's like, oh, remember I got this and this and this. I was like, all right, dude, well, let's get you in front of the camera and let's do a, a Ricky one. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe, share, all that nonsense. No, wait, I forgot what we always say, unsubscribe unsubscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Big video with Gerard the Completionist coming up next week. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. That's, that's not a thing.